We welcome you today as we celebrate this uh, memorial of St. Ignatius of Antioch, who is a bishop and martyr. Today we read from the Ephesians, continue from the letter to the Ephesians. And, you know, it says that going back over the story of salvation, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, and following the ruler of the power of the air, kind of seeing the, the sky as a place that is, that is full of demonic activity. It's kind of an old world way uh, of seeing creation, but the, the spiritual meaning here is the understanding that we were baptized into Christ. We were baptized into Christ it is through his death on the cross that we have received this grace, the grace of God. And as he calls them, the immeasurable riches of his grace. And to me, this kind of follows up on what I was talking about yesterday in my homily about the need to cooperate with God's grace uh, to, to achieve our salvation. And, and so even though we have our Protestant brothers and sisters very often want to deny maybe the, the, the role of good works, of works that are uh, in keeping with faith, uh, as important, as, as essential in a certain sense, that we see here, uh, Paul says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you, it is the gift of God, true, and it is not from works, but it says, for we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works. <laughs> so it, it still involves works. There is no escaping from us working at our salvation. And so the, the, the underlying theme of this reading that I, I'm finding is that we cannot expect to you know, reach the kingdom of heaven if we do not act like people, the kind of people that could live there. <laughs> you know, simple as that. You know that we should act like people that are citizens of heaven. And of course, and of course that's easy to say. That's easy to say uh, that there are so many difficulties, there's so many temptations, there are so many distractions. And so we have to be careful that we're not too distracted and that we're not allowing our environment to be something that makes it a lot harder to, um, to make our way to God. Every now and then I do a room audit. <laughs> And uh, the, the, the guaranteed times of my room audit are when I get transferred, okay, because I'm sort of lazy, so a lot of things basically that I don't feel like I need, I just leave or give away, all right? So if you see me giving away a bunch of stuff, that means I'm getting transferred, all right? Simple as that. And, um, but the other reason I do a room audit is because every now and then I need to go over what I own and ask myself, is it really leading my mind and my heart to God? Is it helping me to focus on God? Because if you, if you have a house, you're probably going to be in your house at times, right? So do you have things that remind you of God? Not just your LSU poster, but I'm talking about, you know, your, your things. I'm talking about like holy things that connect you to God. And if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we have not so holy things in our homes. And we need to kind of like... Uh, let our actual environment, our work environment maybe as well, be a place that is sanctified. And so those room audits help me to try to maintain a, a place that is I can pray in, even in my own, my own room, right? And so today we encounter the, uh, the I'm not going to talk about the gospel, we'll talk about Ignatius of Antioch. Ignatius died uh, under the emperor Tra Trajan, or Trajan, uh, in Rome, and he was an apostolic father that wrote, he wrote seven letters to local communities on church unity and structure. And one of the really interesting things about Ignatius is that he was the first to use the term Catholic Church, Catholic Church, as a designation for Christians. And then, so, so, and then in early literature, of course, Catholic Church meant Christians. Christians meant Catholic Church people, you know. And then later on, when the Reformation happened, uh, we had that breakdown in that naming. And uh, I, I would, what I would advise you to do 
is take some time and read some of the, the letters of Ignatius of, of Antioch. I will not explain them to you and spoil them for you. They are much, much better read for yourself. I don't think you have to pay anything to read these letters. They're, they're on Catholic websites. And it is truly incredible, his zeal and his desire to be united to the Lord. And uh, it's touching, even. It's touching. He was being persecuted. He eventually was martyred. And maybe one of the most powerful things he says is, uh, do not stand in the way of my martyrdom. In other words, don't try to legally get me out of this. He said, even if I in person plead with you, uh, believe not what I say in person, but what I wrote in my letter. It's just absolutely amazing. So St. Ignatius is a great saint, and I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to deny you the chance to read his writings yourself. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us.